good morning to all the boys and girls and our parents at home. Thank you very much for joining us this morning for our Sunday session. Aren't you glad that you are attending church from the house? It's kind of a chilly morning. I also came with my, a heavy coat. So it's nice to be able to wake up in a warm house and worship the Lord. We trust that God will bless us together as we continue to learn from his word and grow deeper and deeper in our faith in him. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. We confess this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to us as we sing and learn your word together. I pray for all the boys and girls and the families that are attending to this service that your Holy Spirit will minister to every one of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing two songs. One says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. And another one is a Swahili song. It says, Nite tangaza neno lakewana. Okay, join us with clapping of hands. I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the mercy of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercy of the Lord, of the power. I will sing of the power of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the power of the Lord forever. I will sing of the power of the Lord. I'm so happy. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I will sing of the power of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing. I will sing of the power of the Lord forever. I will sing of the power of the Lord with my mouth. With my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness With my mouth will I make known Thy faithfulness to all generations Nita tangaza ninola kebana Kwa mataifa mali malio Nita tangaza nandola kebana Kwa mataifa mali malio Wa masai wa imbe na kumsifu bwana Wa kikuyu wa imbe na kumsifu bwana Wa jaluo wa imbe na kumsifu bwana Waimbe na kumsifu bwana na wakamba waimbe na kumsifu bwana waimbe na kumsifu bwana nitatangaza neno lake bwana kwa mataifa mbali mbali yo nitatangaza neno lake bwana kwa mataifa mbali mbali yo Na Europa waimbe na kumsifu bwana na Afrika waimbe na kumsifu bwana hata Asia waimbe na kumsifu bwana Australia waimbe na kumsifu bwana South America waimbe na kumsifu bwana waimbe na kumsifu bwana Waimbe na kumsifu bwana Waimbe na kumsifu bwana uh, So today we continue with our lessons on faith And today's lesson is about one young girl who helped an army captain to have faith in the true God the story comes from the book of 2 Kings and chapter 5. It's a long read, so we shall not read the whole story. You will be reading it later for you. But I'll tell you about it. This took place 
in a place called Syria. How many of you know where Syria is in the map of the world? Maybe after this session, you can be able to check it out. It's good for your Bible knowledge and also for your social studies. During the Bible times, this land of Syria was called Aram. And the land of Aram was bordering the land of Israel or the land that was occupied by the people of God. So we have this one here, that is Aram. Aram. And this whole red part is the land of the people of Israel. And in Israel, there was a special river that was running from north to, to south. This river was called River Jordan. In between, it passed through a small lake. River Jordan was fed by some small rivers on the sides. And then it went into the bigger lake there. So the people of Aram worshipped other gods or idols. But the people of Israel worshipped the true God. We shall see more about that. In the land of Aram, there was a very special man who was a known, strong, successful military man. His name was Naaman. Naaman was a very successful military leader. In fact, the king of Aram had made him the captain of his armies. And so Naaman was loved by the king of Aram and he could get anything he wanted. Except Naaman had a problem. Can you see how spotted he is? He had a skin disease called leprosy. Leprosy is a bad skin disease that's very infectious. It could be easily passed on from one person to another. And he had tried all the places he could in his country of Aram, but nobody could make Aram well. So, Naaman, we are also afraid of you. So please, just go, go and stay in some quarantine. We are afraid of your leprosy. One day, the armies of Aram moved into Israel and attacked the people of Israel here. And they overcame the people of Israel. And they carried some of the people as slaves. And among those people was a young girl who was carried as a slave from Israel back to Aram. Now slaves are not paid. They work and work and they don't get a pay. Can you imagine if you were this girl and you were taken up as a slave, that would mean you stop going to school. That would mean you have no time to play with your friends. And once more, it would mean you're taken away from your home, from your parents, your family, to live and labor for people you don't know. How would you feel? Would you really serve those people with joy? Or would you be looking for every opportunity to escape and run away? This girl knew the true God of Israel, who is the God we worship. And she knew that her God was powerful and he could help her even when she was in slavery. She also knew that God did miracles in the land of Israel. She had seen the prophets of God, one prophet called Elisha, do miracles by helping people who were sick. So instead of getting sulky and complaining, she served Naaman's family well. And she also thought, this master, 
I would like him to know the true God, the one who can help him. And so she went to her mistress and told her, you know, if my master could go to my country Israel, there's a prophet there and he can make them well. So Naaman's wife believed this girl and she went and told her husband, do you know, this slave girl from Israel has told me there in Israel, they have a prophet who can Pray for you and you will be well. And Naaman also believed the words of the girl. And being a military leader and being a great soldier who was also the bodyguard of ki the king of Aram, he couldn't just take off and go. So he went to the king of Aram and told him, O oh, king, I have a slave girl in my house from Israel and she tells me that there is a prophet there who can make me well and take away my leprosy. And the king of Aram also believed and he said, certainly take your servants, take many gifts and take to the king of Israel. Let them make you well. Here, I'm writing a letter for you. Take this letter with you. So he gave him a letter, take it with you and give it to the king of Israel. So Naaman was very happy. He put together many gifts and then he went with his servants to the king of Israel. You know, the king of Aram didn't know the true God. In fact, in that country, they used to worship idols. And there was a special idol called Rimon that the king of Aram used to worship. So in his mind he thought, the king of Israel is the one who makes people well. So anyway, Naaman and his group went to Israel and they went to the king of Israel and told him, we have come, I have been sent by my king so that you can make me well. What? The king of Israel wondered, what's wrong with this man? He's telling me to make him well. Am I God? Do I heal people? This one is looking for trouble with me. But while he was getting upset, Elisha learned that, oh, the king is upset because a person from Aram has come to tell him to make him well. So Elisha sent to the king and said, Tell that man to come to me and I will show him that there is God, a God in Israel who makes people well. So he was told, okay, there is a prophet called Elisha here in Israel. Go to him. He will make you well. So again, Naaman and his group went and they went to Elisha's home. And, but you know what? They were expecting that Elisha will receive them as dignitaries and treat them like big people because they were used to being treated like that. But Elisha, he sent his servant and told him, go and tell that Naaman guy to go to River Jordan and dip himself in River Jordan seven times and he will be well. How do you think Naaman felt? A dignitary like him he's being told to go and dip himself in a river during the day when all his servants are watching he was upset he said what's wrong with this Elisha I thought he would come and meet me and bless his hands over me and pray for me so that my leprosy may be gone doesn't he know that we have big rivers in my country I could have washed there. Mm, I'm not going. I'm turning back and going to my country. And when he was about to go back, his servants pleaded with him. And they told him, Oh, master, please, we have come a long way. Just do what the servant of their God is saying. Because if he had told you to do great things, you would have done them. Please, let's just go. So Naaman decided, 
okay i will go i will try it and so Naaman went with his group of people to river jordan he dipped once and came out he looked and he still was leprous he went a second time third fourth how is he oh he still has the leprosy he dipped again in jordan the fifth time and the sixth time and he looked and he still had leprosy then he said okay now the last time seven time deep and he came out and looked at himself <gasps> oh the leprosy was gone and Naaman was very very happy he was happy and he went with his people and went to Elisha and told him now I know that there is one true God in Israel and he is the only God I want to believe in all the idols of Aram could not make me well so I want to believe in the one true God of Israel I want to be offering sacrifices to him I am not going to offer sacrifices to the idols of, of Aram and so please allow me to carry some soil from Israel to go and make a special altar where I will be sacrificing for the one true God and that is what happened so you see a young slave girl from Israel helped an army captain to know the true God and to believe in him it started with the way she behaved when she was taken there as a slave why do you think they believed her maybe they saw how she was very respectful to them maybe they saw how she was doing her work without complaining and doing everything very well and they knew there was something special in her and then by the time she talked about the power of the God of Israel or the prophet in Israel they could believe her and you know even you can be able to lead big people to know God it might be your parents maybe they don't know God it could be your uncles your aunties even grandparents or your neighbors by the way you live respecting them and they see you living an obedient life they could start seeing that there's something special in your life did you know even jesus when he was a young boy of 12 years like some of you was able to talk to the big leaders in his church and they listened to him because they also saw he was behaving in a special way, being obedient to God, being respectful to his parents and to other people. So the way we, you live your life will make it possible, even for people much older than you, see the special work of God in your life. And then you can now be brave to tell them, God loves you. God cares for you. You can pray. For people in your family, for your neighbors when they are unwell or they have problems, and they can, God's power will work and bring a miracle in their life. And many will begin to believe in the God that we worship. I would like you to think about two grown-up people you know. Like I said, maybe they are a relative, a friend, a teacher or a neighbor but they don't believe in God they don't even go to church I like you to write down their names and pray for them and pray for yourself that God will give you courage to tell them that God loves them let's do that in the next two minutes
Wonderful. I hope you've been able to identify people that you'll be praying for and you will talk to about God. Now, our memory verse comes from the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. The gospel is the word of God that tells us that Jesus is the Savior and he can forgive our sins. So we should not be ashamed to tell other people. Like the young girl in Aram, she was not ashamed, she was not afraid. Let's say that verse together once more. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Uh, as we come to, close, to the close of our lesson, I have some activities that you can continue to do during the week as a way of applying the truths of the Bible that we have learned. The first one is that you read the book of Kings, Second Kings chapter 5 and get more information about the story of Naaman. Then also practice the memory verse. Make sure you can say it without checking on, in the Bible. With permission from your parents, call the two people that you prayed for during our lesson and tell them God loves you, God cares for you, and God wants you to believe in him. And you can invite them to listen to our YouTube Sunday School lessons and also the sermons. So share with them our YouTube link. The last thing is just to help you know more, find out more about the disease called leprosy. You can Google again with permission from your parents. It's a way of educating ourselves about some of the diseases that disturbed people in the Bible times. So thank you very much for attending to the lesson. I hope you are blessed and you have learned things that will help you to grow in your faith and to help other people have faith in God. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you love us and you care for us and you love all the people, even those who do not know you. We thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ who died that everyone may come to you if they believe in you. I pray for all the friends who have attended this lesson that this week they will be brave to tell someone that God loves you and that to invite them to believe in you and to study your word and to walk in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you very much. I pray that you will have a good week. God bless you and see you or let's meet together on Sunday on our YouTube lesson. Bye.